Well, the 2014 season is really starting to heat up. Week 14 now, that means playoff races in both the AFC and the NFC in full swing. You have legitimate Super Bowl contenders emerging. You have betters hopefully having a better feel for these teams than they did several weeks ago. It is a great time to be an NFL fan. Would like to talk about a few of these Week 14 games now quickly. Do want to remind you, though, we preview every game in great detail here at BetDag Tips. So please do check back with us over the next couple of days. But a few of these games caught my eye. Let's discuss them now, shall we? Starting with the Cleveland Browns hosting the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts a four-point favorite on BetDAC. 50 is the total in this game. You probably know why I started with this game. There was a Johnny Football sighting last week in Buffalo. The Browns turning to Johnny Manziel at quarterback in replacement of Brian Hoyer in their loss to the Bills. Now, he led the team to their only touchdown drive of the game, but keep in mind this guy, a rookie, has never started a game in the NFL, and the Browns at 7-5 and five, right in the thick of the playoff race. Still, most observers, media types, seem to think that Browns coach Mike Pettin is going to announce that Manziel, that Manziel will be the starter this week. Pettin has not made that announcement yet as of the time of this recording, but it is expected within the next couple of days. A little bit surprised, to be honest with you, that Betdak has a line for this game when we don't for sure know who's starting at quarterback for Cleveland, but I guess it's not going to make that much of a difference. The Colts have been better than Cleveland this year, and they will be a slight favorite in Cleveland, regardless of who is under center for the Browns. Colts have the NFL's best offense, first in the league in total offense, pass yards per game, and points scored. Now, the Cleveland defense has played well in recent weeks, but they are not good against the run. The Browns, 28th against the run. Fortunately for them, though, this Indianapolis offense is pass first, so I'm not sure the Colts are going to be able to hurt the Browns where they're the weakest. Listen, it's going to be tough for me to get away from Indianapolis in this game, especially if Johnny Manziel starts. I know that's going to excite a lot of people, might excite some Cleveland betters. Just don't know about backing a guy in his first career start against an Indianapolis defense that's better than people realize. I know statistically the Colts not great defensively, 23rd in yards allowed, 25th in pass yards allowed. You have to remember, though, as we said, the Colts, the NFL's best offense, so teams always play and catch up against them, always forced to throw the football, so that skews the numbers a little bit. This Colts defense underrated, better than the numbers would indicate, and I think they're going to give Cleveland, the Cleveland offense some trouble, regardless of who is under center. That's especially true if Johnny Manziel makes his first career start. If I were a Browns fan, I would be hoping that Brian Hoyer gets at least one more start, at least one more crack to keep this thing going. If the Browns lose this week and they have six losses, desperation time, they probably need to win out. You want to throw Johnny Football in there, that's fine. But my two cents, if I was a, Cleveland's fan, a Cleveland fan or a Cleveland supporter, I would hope that they stuck with Brian Hoyer for one more week. I tell you what, if they do go with Manziel, I'm going to be very tempted to get on board with an Indianapolis bet here. Let's move on now. Stay in the AFC North, though. What about the Pittsburgh Steelers going on the road to face the Cincinnati Bengals? This is a key game in the playoff destinies of both teams. Pittsburgh at 7-5 and five now. Tough loss last week at home to New Orleans. The Bengals, though, have got it together. They seem to have got it together anyway. Three straight wins, all three wins coming on the road. They hit a low point this season when they lost at home 24-3 to Cleveland four weeks ago. But as we said, three wins since then. Cincinnati's finally started playing some defense. They were so good on that side of the ball last year, third in the league in both yards allowed and points allowed. But they had been really disappointing throughout this season. But now they're starting to get healthy on that side of the ball. Middle linebacker Ray Maluga has been back for a few weeks now. Vontez Burfecht getting healthy again. And the Bengals now 10th in points allowed. In this three-game winning streak, they've had all three opponents to 13 points or fewer. And one of those opponents was the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. So it's not like the, the Bengals have just been shutting down the weaklings of the league. They've legitimately been playing better on the defensive side of the ball. But they'll be tested by Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh now third in the league in total offense, eighth in points scored. This Pittsburgh offense found their stride in the middle of the season, found their identity as a spread it out, pass first offense. Le'Veon Bell obviously is still getting plenty of work out of the backfield, but Pittsburgh passes to set up the run. Think they're going to think they're going to do the same thing on Sunday against Cincinnati. Now, obviously this game's critical for Pittsburgh. Seven and five. Two games behind Cincinnati in the loss column in the AFC North, and they're right in the thick of the AFC wildcard mix. They'd actually miss the playoffs if the season ended today, but they're right in the mix there with about four or five other teams. 
But this is critical for Cincinnati as well. You know, after the Bengals won last week to take a two-game lead in the loss column in the North, I say in the loss column because, remember, Cincinnati has a tie this year, so they're 8-3-1. and one. So only a game up in the, win, in the win column, but two games up in the loss column. But after they won last week to take that two-game lead, I thought, you know what? Cincinnati finally has established itself, finally has firm control over the AFC North, a division that has been up in the air for the past few weeks. But looking at it a little closer, I'm not sure that's the case, especially if Cincinnati loses this week their remaining schedule. The Bengals have the Steelers twice. They go on the road to face the Cleveland Browns. Keep in mind, they lost 24-3 to Cleveland a month ago, and they have to face the Denver Broncos. So it's not easy for the Cincinnati Bengals the rest of the way. They badly need a win here on Sunday against Pittsburgh. If they lose this game, you never know. Cincinnati could drop a couple of more, fall, the way, fall all the way out of the playoffs. The AFC North still wide open. Any, any one of the four teams could win the division. Any one of the four teams could certainly miss the playoffs. This Pittsburgh-Cincinnati game going to be key on Sunday. Let's move on now, shall we? The Kansas City Chiefs head west this week to face the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the Cardinals a one-and-a-half point favorite on bet deck. There's still some Cardinals love out there. After all, wasn't too long ago this team was being talked about as the best team in the NFL. They were 9-1, and 8-2 and two against the spread, league's best record. But then you know what happened. Carson Palmer went down with that season-ending injury. Drew Stanton has taken, has taken Palmer's place. Stanton, of course, played three games early in the season. And one thing Stanton's last three games and his early three games have in common is the Cardinals' offense has been horrible in all of them. You know, this team hasn't been able to run the ball all year, 31st in rush yards per game. Their offense had been dependent on the big plays in the passing game, the downfield passing of Carson Palmer, Without Palmer in the lineup, that really has been almost totally eliminated. I mean, the only thing I think that Drew Stanton really provides the Arizona offense that maybe Carson Palmer didn't was some more mobility. Stanton is more mobile in the pocket, can get out there and run occasionally, but that's a poor trade-off for, for Carson Palmer's precision downfield passing that, as I said, was the backbone of this Arizona offense. Take that away, and the Cardinals not able to move the ball, not able to score, and they're going up against a great Kansas City defense this week. The Chiefs, fourth in points allowed. Actually tied with Arizona at fourth in points allowed. Both these teams surrendering just 18.7 points per game. That is why we see a low total here, like 40.5. To me, this game's so crucial for the Arizona Cardinals. Crucial for both teams. Listen, all these games we're talking about here, now we're down to week 14, right down to it. Must win, must win time now for several of these teams. The Kansas City Chiefs certainly fall in that category. They've lost two straight games, 7-5, and five, in danger of the playoffs slipping away. But, you know, even when the Chiefs were playing really well a couple of weeks ago, I don't think anybody would have, been, would have been stunned if you would have told them that Kansas City Chiefs were going to miss the playoffs. However, two weeks ago, everyone was talking about Arizona as a legit Super Bowl contender. No one was thinking there was any chance the Cardinals were going to miss the playoffs. After all, they had a three-game lead in their division. But I'll tell you what. Again, they've lost a couple of games in a row now. Drew Stanton at quarterback. They're unable to move the ball. A tough Kansas City team this week. They finished with some NFC West rivals the last three weeks. If Arizona loses this game, watch out. Could be in for a serious tailspin. They could miss the playoffs. Seattle breathing down their neck now in the division. Danger spot for the Cardinals here. A must-win game, I believe, at home against Kansas City Chiefs. And I think they probably will be able to pick up this win. I don't have much faith in Drew Stanton and their offense, but their defense so good, and the weakness of their defense, the secondary. They're not very good against the pass, 27th in pass yards allowed, and that secondary took another hit when we learned that Tyron Matthews' starting safety will be out the next three games with a finger injury. I believe it's a dislocated thumb. So Arizona is a little vulnerable in the secondary, but the Chiefs just not well equipped to attack that vulnerability. Kansas City, 31st in the NFL in pass yards per game. Only 182 pass yards per game Kansas City averages this season. And really, they can't get that offense. They haven't been able to get that offense moving. I say they can't. I'm sure they can. We have seen them at times this year play well offensively. But 28th in total offense, total yards per game. Yes, they can run the football, top 10 in rush yards per game. But Arizona, so good against the run. The Cardinals surrendering fewer than 90 rushing yards per game. So if you're going to beat this Arizona defense, you've got to do it through the air. Just not sure if Kansas City is well-equipped to do so. So I think this is going to be a low-scoring game, 
an absolute must win for the Arizona Cardinals. And as of now, at Tuesday, early in the week, I reserve the right to change my mind. I do have a slight lean in the Arizona direction. Just don't know if the Kansas City offense is going to be good enough to beat this great Arizona defense in Arizona on the road. Let's move on now, shall we, to another game involving two prospective NFC playoff teams. Seattle Seahawks going on the road to face the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles just a one-point favorite on BetDAC, 48.5 the total here. This could be the best game of this week 14. The Eagles have been rolling, but so have the Seahawks. People worried about Seattle about a month ago. Those worries have been calm now. Seattle has won five of their past six games. Really dominated division rival San Francisco last week, 19 to three. The week before, they beat Arizona, another division rival, also by a score of 19 to three. So this Seattle defense has stepped it up. They're now number one in the NFL in total defense, right where they were at the end of last season, third in points allowed. Now their offense is a bit one-dimensional. It's the same old story for the Seahawks. They love to run the football. It's not that they don't put up the passing numbers because they can't, because certainly Russell Wilson has shown that what you ask of him, he can do. That's just not the way they choose to play. Seattle likes to play with that defense and with the power running of Marshawn Lynch. They lead the NFL in rush yards per game, 168.6 yards per game. That's 20 yards better than the next closest competitor. And they're facing a Philadelphia defense here that is a little soft, or at least definitely has that reputation. The Eagles, especially bad in the secondary this season, 26th against the pass. They've been a little bit better against the run statistically, 12th against the run. But the Eagles, similar to a team like the Indianapolis Colts, similar to a team like the Denver Broncos, they score so many points that frequently teams fall behind and they're forced to go into pass first and pass second mode. They're forced to just throw the ball all the time, abandon the running game. So how much of Philadelphia's statistical success against the run is legitimate? And how much of that is just because, again, teams forced to go in pass the ball all the time mode and forget about the running game when they face the Eagles? We'll find out this week. We'll find out if this Philadelphia defense has indeed approved against the run. Because remember, they were terrible against the run last season. Because you know Seattle is going to test them. They are going to run it right at them. Because the happy side effect of being able to run the football is keeping the opposing offense off the field. And even though the Seahawks great on defense, nothing wrong with keeping this Philadelphia offense on the sidelines. The Eagles have been very good on that side of the ball, even after losing starting quarterback Nick Foles. As a matter of fact, their offense has actually improved with Mark Sanchez under center. In Sanchez's four starts, the Eagles averaging over 35 points per game. They've won three of those four starts. But it's the one loss that has everybody, people like me and maybe you, concerned. Everybody's still wondering if this Eagles team is for real. Because remember, what was it, three weeks ago, they went into Green Bay and were just embarrassed by the Packers. Now, I know they beat the Dallas Cowboys last week, another good team, but those other two wins since Sanchez has been playing have been against bad teams. So we've seen a couple of wins from the Eagles against bad teams. We saw them beat Dallas last week. We saw them get blown out by Green Bay. Are you bought in? Do you think Philadelphia is for real, meaning a legitimate Super Bowl contender? And they're going to have to be if they're going to beat the Seahawks. Because as we said, the Seahawks have it together now. They've won five of six. It's a very important game for them. They still trail Arizona in the NFC West. So I think we'll find out a lot about the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, if this game were in Seattle, I'd probably have a strong Seahawks lean. But I have a funny feeling about this one. Even though you got Mark Sanchez going up against the league's best defense, this game in Philly... Seattle has not been great on the road this season. They've lost three times on the road. I know they went on the road and stomped the San Francisco 49ers last week. But still, we know the Seahawks are a little bit better at home than they are on the road. Wouldn't surprise me to see the Philadelphia Eagles pull out a win here. But certainly, this, would, this one could go either way. Highly doubt I'll be including this one among my best bets. Feels like a bit of a coin flip to me. Final game I'd like to briefly talk about in this week 14, the Sunday night game. The New England Patriots traveling to San Diego to face the Chargers. New England just a three and a half point favorite here on BetDAC, 50.5 the total. I thought this line was going to be Patriots minus four and a half, Patriots minus five, but I guess I underestimated the respect that the betting public apparently has for the San Diego Chargers. Yes, the Chargers pulled out a nice win in Baltimore last week. Fortunately, we were backing them as a six and a half point dog. Put up 34 points in that game against a tough Baltimore defense. But until that game, the San Diego offense had really been in a slump. Really, the Chargers in general had been in a slump. They had failed to cover in six consecutive games until last week. 
New England, meanwhile, had been on a run unmatched league-wide. Now that run ended in Green Bay last week as the Packers pulled out a 26-21 win. The most surprising thing about that game was not that the Patriots didn't win. It was that they produced just 21 points. This offense had been on fire. They were headed into last week's game, ranked first in the league in points scored. But again, a Packers defense that has been vulnerable this season was able to hold them to just 21 points. And the Chargers have been better on defense than the Packers. That's the hidden secret of this San Diego team is how good their defense has been. We talked about it last week, and yes, it wasn't the defense that won in that game in Baltimore. Chargers pulling out a 34-33 win. But heading into the game, we talked about how the Chargers defense has been underrated this year. It was really two games, I think, that are the culprit. Weeks 8 and 9 against Denver and Miami, the Chargers surrendering 72 combined points. And when people see that, back-to-back -back weeks, high-profile games, I think they sort of file that away as, eh, not a good defense. But really, this Chargers defense has been very good this season. Top 10 in the NFL in total defense, meaning yards allowed. They're no longer top 10 in points allowed. Just on the outside looking in at 11th after surrendering 33 last week. Look, I'm not suggesting the Chargers are going to shut down the Patriots. No, I don't think that's going to happen. What I will say, though, is they're better on that side of the ball than the Green Bay Packers. And Green Bay did a nice job of limiting this New England offense last week. So I don't know. You look at a total here like 50.5, I might play under that total. Because the San Diego offense, as we mentioned, they had been struggling before they broke out last week. Not sure if Phillip Rivers is fully healthy. And this is the best defense that New England has had in several years. So early, I would lean towards under 50.5 in that game. And I tell you what, even though I liked the Chargers last week, and even though they pulled out a great win in Baltimore, I'd be surprised if the Patriots lost two in a row. They still have firm control in the race for home field advantage in the AFC playoffs. And with wins over Denver and Indianapolis, who are two of their nearest competitors, you would think that they would maintain control. But don't forget about a team like Cincinnati that's only lost three times. The Patriots need to keep winning. They need this win. I think they'll probably pick it up. But as of now, on Tuesday, the bet I might like more in this game, under 50.5. There you have it. Those are five games this week 14 that stuck out, caught my eye, maybe some of the highlights of the week. But we preview all 16 week 14 games in great detail here at BetDAC Tips. So please do check back with us over the next few days. We're sure you have the information you're looking for on the game you're looking for. Well, until then, for BetDAC Tips, I'm John Arnett. We'll see you next time.